Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about yet another resolution to a very big mystery when it comes to space sciences. We're going to be talking about gamma ray bursts, also known as GRBs. These super rare events that, when happen, tend to release the same amount of energy as our sun is going to release throughout its 10 billion years of life, but in a fraction of a second, or sometimes a few seconds. And this is something that has actually been sort of bugging scientists for a very long time, because there are still so many things we don't really understand about them. And more specifically, there are still so many things about gamma ray bursts that don't actually make sense. Now, first of all, a little bit of history. Originally, nobody actually knew what gamma ray bursts were. The first detection of gamma ray bursts actually happened completely by accident, and it was not a result of a scientific study. It was detected by a secret satellite orbiting around planet Earth, the Vela satellite that you see right here, whose main purpose was actually to try to detect secret nuclear explosions on the surface of the planet. For example, if the Soviets or maybe the Chinese were testing them somewhere, or were somehow trying to avoid the agreements that were made between the countries. And so back in 1967, it made its first detection. But all of this was done in secret, and for many years nobody actually knew about the detections until the military declassified the results. And the first data from these satellites came out in 1973, around six to seven years later. But even back then, nobody had any idea what exactly they were looking at. Some people thought that maybe it's actually collisions between different comets producing these unusual explosions. They were just way too powerful to be coming from another galaxy. Some people thought that maybe it was explosions of neutron stars or some unusual supernova really close to us. But we didn't really see any other observations coming from these regions. And it wasn't until 1997 that we officially knew exactly what we were looking at. The most powerful explosions in the universe. The explosions so ridiculously powerful that nobody actually believed they were possible until later on. Releasing more light and more energy in a fraction of a second than the entire galaxy they were coming from. And since then, over the years, more and more gamma ray bursts were detected, with thousands upon thousands discovered to date. But obviously, in the last two decades of us studying them, not everything about them still makes sense. So, for example, we know that there are generally, or there seem to be generally, two types of different gamma ray bursts. The most common type of a gamma ray burst seems to be this right here. It's what's known as a collapse R. When a massive star, that's a lot more massive than the Sun, essentially reaches the end of its existence and starts collapsing on itself. Eventually, there is a really, really large burst on the inside that sort of tries to escape the surface of the star, and as it breaks the surface, that's when the gamma ray burst occurs. This, on the other hand, starts producing a lot of other emissions afterwards as well. As a matter of fact, it sort of looks like this. This jet, as it starts colliding with various materials moving away from the star, ends up producing what's known as an afterglow in a lot of different frequencies, first in the X-rays, then in the visible light, radio light, and so on. And this afterglow is what the scientists have been able to detect many different times now using different telescopes. But following the explosion, what's left behind is essentially a black hole. And this model of the collapsar, of the star collapsing on itself, was originally the only explanation for the existence of gamma ray bursts, but some of the gamma ray bursts were slightly different. Something did not really add up. As a matter of fact, this image right here sort of shows you how a lot of these gamma ray bursts do have very different properties. Some of them are extremely short, some of them are more or less long, some of them seem to go up, go down, and then go up again, and some of them seem to happen many times. Which of course suggests that gamma ray bursts could actually be produced in different ways. And so a few years ago, the scientists officially confirmed that the other way gamma ray bursts can actually be created is when two neutron stars collide, producing something similar. In this case, it's usually a short duration GRP, but it's still extremely powerful. And so because of this, today we sort of have two different types of GRB classifications. We have the short bursts that are usually caused by neutron stars, and then we have the longer bursts that are usually more or less different as well, that are caused by collapsars, with a lot of properties determined by the amount of material that the gamma ray burst has to go through. But last year, something else was discovered that was recently analyzed in a paper you can find in the description below. Another observation was made by different facilities around the planet, discovering another unusual GRB. And because this one here was actually thoroughly analyzed by different facilities, we now have a pretty good picture of what we think happened here. So here's what the scientists saw. The initial flash was really short, approximately 0.9 seconds. 
suggesting that this was a short GRB or that it was caused by two neutron stars colliding. But further observations from other facilities indicated that this, this was actually a really large supernova, and there was a lot of afterglow as well, suggesting that this was actually a long GRB, most likely from some sort of a collapse star. And this by itself is already really impressive. This galaxy is about 6.6 .6 billion light years away from us. But by using the incredible telescopes in Hawaii, specifically the one known as Gemini North, the scientists were able to visually confirm that this was indeed a supernova and more likely not a kilonova such as the one produced by neutron stars. Implying of course that this was some sort of an unusual collapsar. Now apparently just to get this picture alone, the scientists had to do a lot of processing. First of all, obviously you have to somehow remove the background light from the galaxy itself. You then also have to pinpoint the exact location of the supernova that's once again over 6 billion light years away from us. And so all of this did require a thorough analysis, something that's thoroughly described in the paper in the description below. But more importantly, their analysis allowed them to understand what probably happened here. And more specifically, it actually helped them to possibly solve a mystery. They do believe it was caused by this, by a collapsar, a gamma ray burst that leaves the star exploding from within and breaking the surface right here. But in this case, they actually believe that this is more likely what happened. It was basically a fizzle. The gamma ray burst was just not powerful enough to penetrate and to break the star open. It very likely started, it went through most of the star, but just as it reached the surface, it fizzled and the black hole was created. And this would actually result in a relatively short gamma ray burst, while also then producing all of the other observations, including the optical light and a lot of other emissions that were detected. And this of course means that maybe the star was just really massive or had a very strange composition, where essentially it did start to collapse, but the gamma ray burst almost did not happen, only a tiny part of it escaped while at the same time helping us explain a mystery of the missing supernova. So when it comes to so-called long GRBs, they're actually generally associated with a very specific type of a supernova, the supernova that's known as the Type 1c broad line supernova. But for some reason there are so many of these unusual Type 1c supernova, but there are actually not enough GRBs produced by them, so something is missing in there. If all GRBs are created by these Type 1c broadline supernova, how is it that some of them do not produce gamma ray bursts? And so there's definitely a discrepancy between the amount of actual supernova detected and the actual gamma ray bursts. But this paper provides an excellent explanation. First of all, maybe some of the short GRBs that we thought are coming from neutron stars are actually coming from collapse stars, from stars going supernova. At the same time, maybe the majority of these collapsers have trouble creating GRBs because of this. The star is just too massive, the star is maybe too large, and so the actual burst never makes it to the surface to create the gamma rays. And so this is a perfect explanation for why we're not seeing a lot of these GRBs everywhere. It's actually quite possible that it's very difficult for a typical burst to somehow break the envelope of the star itself. Which also of course implies that for a GRB to be formed, the star must be really special or have extremely powerful explosion in the beginning. But what sort of properties a star must have, that's not something we can currently answer. But overall, any study in regards to GRBs is usually super fascinating. First of all, there's already been implications that some of the GRBs potentially have a chance to cause an extinction event on the planet. At least one such event might have actually even occurred on the planet approximately 450 million years ago. But because these events are so extremely rare, and because there are actually currently no potential objects that might go um, supernova and create GRBs in the Milky Way galaxy, we currently, and actually for a very long time, have nothing to worry about. Nevertheless, these are still extremely intriguing events. Even though they're so extremely rare in every single galaxy, most likely occurring once every 5 million years or so, because of the rarity of these unusual events and because of how incredibly powerful they are, there are still so many unanswered questions about them. More importantly, in the last few years, the scientists were able to create a lot of super interesting techniques in order to actually search for these events, in order to precisely locate these objects, and to be able to analyze them in various frequencies. Which is a collection of different satellites located in different parts of orbit that are able to detect different frequencies. And by detecting the same event in different frequencies from different locations around the planet, they can then be used to triangulate the exact location from which something came. In this particular case, it took approximately 17 hours to work out the exact location, and then, 
By using the very powerful Hawaiian telescope, the scientists were able to collect the optical data in order to establish that this was a supernova. So definitely super interesting, very advanced and extremely complicated techniques. Something that one day will most likely create some sort of an amazing technology that we might actually use in everyday life. But I guess we don't know what it is just yet. But anyway, very interesting study, interesting discovery and a resolution to an old mystery. But once we learn something else about gamma ray bursts or something else is discovered using this network, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. And so until then, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. And also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon, joining a channel membership, or buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.